Okay. And Joanna and I will go on mute. It's all yours. Okay. Good day, everybody. Um, today, I would like to present a new tool for downstream process development, the Multimode Mimetic Ligand Library, which enables rapid and inexpensive identification of chromatography adsorbents for use in downstream processes for the purification of therapeutic proteins. Firstly, a little bit about prometic bioseparations. Um, prometic bioseparations, or PBL, is the UK-based subsidiary of its parent company, Prometic Life Sciences, Inc., which is headquartered in Canada. The company is now 30 years old and specializes in the development and manufacture of high-performance chromatography adsorbents, packed chromatography columns, and the development of efficient and cost-effective downstream processes. PBL is located on two sites in the UK. Our research and development group is based in Cambridge, uh, whilst our GMP standard manufacturing facilities are located on the Isle of Man. PBL has grown steadily over the last few years and currently employs 95 staff in the UK. In view of the critical applications of chromatography adsorbents, PBL has adopted a GMP approach to the production of its bioseparation products. Uniquely, all of our chromatography adsorbents are manufactured in controlled environments, uh, including clean rooms conforming to ISO, ISO 8 standard or better. The company is ISO 9001-2015 accredited and has adopted part two of the rules and guidance for pharmaceutical manufacturers and distributors uh, for the GMP a production of active pharmaceutical ingredients. Uh, and we have this as our standard for the manufacture of chromatography adsorbents. PBL has the ability to manufacture individual batches of adsorbents from one liter up to 1,000 liters and has manufacturing capacity in excess of 35,000 liters per annum, which makes us one of the largest manufacturers of chromatography adsorbents for use in downstream processing. Currently, 18 of our products are used uh, in the production of licensed, so that's FDA or EMA approved products, and uh, they have been used successfully in process columns up to two meters in diameter. A number of different methods have been developed over the years to separate protein mixtures uh, to deliver a purified protein product. These methods vary widely in their selectivity and the resulting purity of the purified target protein. Differences in size can be used to evolve protein mixtures. However, um, techniques such as gel filtration are, are not used. Now these have been superseded by uh, membrane filtration methods. Ion exchange chromatography and hydrophobic interaction chromatography feature in many downstream processes to separate proteins, and they do this on the basis of differences in net charge or polarity. Um, and these methods remain very useful techniques, but can be limiting when the product and impurities have a similar charge or hydrophobicity. More recently, ligands combining ionic and hydrophobic groups in the same molecule uh, have been developed, uh, and these are the so-called mixed-mode or multi-mode ligands, which provide an increase in selectivity and increased tolerance to process buffer composition in comparison to ion exchange or HIC alone. And then finally, we have affinity chromatography, which remains uh, the most selective purification technique and utilizes selective binding interactions between an immobilized affinity ligands and a specific binding site on the target protein. So looking back over the last 30 years or so, uh, downstream processes have changed significantly. The traditional approach has, has consisted of a series of steps which provide progressive increases in purity until eventually the desired purity has been achieved. However, this approach involved many unit operations which all contribute to increasing cost and uh, reduce yields. So in comparison, modern downstream processes make use of affinity chromatography capture steps to provide a large increase in purity at the very first process step, which makes removal of residual impurities relatively straightforward by using one or more polishing steps where the impurities are captured uh, and the product passes directly through the columns. So today, most monoclonal antibodies are purified using this approach 
with an immobilized protein A column uh, as the affinity capture step. Um, affinity capture is not limited to monoclonal antibodies and, uh, and protein A, and in reality, any protein can be captured and purified using affinity chromatography, provided uh, a suitable ligand is available. So, for example, uh, here we can see uh, the use of uh, affinity chromatography to purify plasminogen, and in this example, a novel ligand has been developed using computational chemistry and high throughput screening, which uh, has uh, the ligand has high uh, affinity for plasminogen, and this ligand enables the capture of plasminogen directly from human plasma providing greater than 90% purity in one pass and 340-fold purification. So this is an, an example of a very effective way of, of isolating this, this protein from plasma using affinity chromatography. Um, I want to turn now to multimode ligands. Um, so these are ligands which have uh, two or more different types of binding interactions. Uh, and these ligands have grown to prominence in recent years due to the general usefulness as affinity ligands for the capture uh, and polishing of, of pharmaceuticals. Um, so these ligands combine a charge group and a hydrophobic group uh, into one ligand structure. Uh, and in the example shown here, which is actually the, the GE uh, healthcare ligand, CAPTO MMC, uh, we can see here that we have a hydrophobic group linked uh, in the same structure to uh, an, an acidic group. Um, however, there's a, a limitation to these types of ligands in, in that there's relatively few available commercially at present. And as a consequence, the, the buffer conditions need to be optimized to suit the ligands available. Uh, and this means that ligands, these types of ligands may not always be compatible with uh, the proteins uh, that, that need purification. So we believe um, a better approach uh, to multimode ligand chromatography is to produce a diverse array of multimode ligands and select the ligand that has the binding and elution properties which are compatible with the target protein and, and feedstock. So the multimode mimetic ligand library uh, has been developed by Prometic which consists of 96 uh, different ligands uh, attached to agarose beads via uh, a spacer arm. Uh, and each ligand has a different charge and hydrophobicity. hydrophobicity uh, and we use a combination of both anion and cation groups uh, and aliphatic and aromatic groups uh, to create these libraries of, of multimode ligands. So the library itself consists of a block of 96 microcolumns. Uh, each column has a, a column volume of uh, 250 microliters, and these are arranged in a conventional 12 by array, 12 by 8 array format. Um, and this enables rapid screening to identify the ligand which is best suited uh, for capture or polishing of the target protein without the need to adjust or optimize the, the starting protein solution. So because of the increased diversity of the multimode mimetic ligands, uh, the selectivity is, is higher than conventional multimode ligands. And this means that uh, if we compare them to the other established purification techniques, um, that these ligands sit at somewhere between the multimode ligands, the traditional multimode ligands, uh, and the affinity ligands in terms of their binding selectivity. So, um, we produce these uh, multimode ligands, the, the multimode mimetic ligands, uh, by starting with a, a, an activated triazine group. This is a, a coupling chemistry that we use quite uh, extensively with Impromatic. And to this activated dichlorotriazine group, uh, we can attach sequentially uh, two different groups by use of, of amine attachment. Um, so this means that we can make a diverse array of libraries uh, containing ligands which have combinations of uh, ionic groups and hydrophobic groups. And one feature of this chemistry is that all of these types of ligands can be cleaned and sanitized with, with sodium hydroxide, which is the preferred 
cleaning and sanitizing agent used by the industry. If we go now to um, the types of groups that, that we incorporate into these ligands, we can uh, attach a wide variety of ionic compounds such as sulfonate groups, carboxylate groups, uh, uh, amino groups, uh, and also various types of hydrophobic compounds such as alkyl groups or, or um, phenyl groups. Uh, so using these, these compounds, we, we can generate this diverse array of, of ligands. The library itself is, is organized into uh, a, a, a conventional 12 by 8 layout, um, and we've divided the, the library block up into zones. So in zone 1, we have ligands which are predominantly ionic in character, and in zone 6, we have ligands which are predominantly hydrophobic in character. And then in the center here, in zones 2, 3, 4, and 5, we have ligands which combine both uh, ionic groups and uh, hydrophobic groups, uh, and we've divided these into positively charged um, hydrophobic groups and negatively charged hydrophobic groups, and we've subdivided the hydrophobic groups into those based on aliphatic compounds and those based on aromatic uh, compounds. Uh, so this dividing the block up in this way uh, enables the... Um, uh, sort of a binding conditions and elution conditions to be uh, to be easily determined. To demonstrate that these ligands really do have uh, a diverse array of, of, of chemical properties, uh, we can look at these using computational chemistry software uh, and interrogate the ligands used for a variety of different parameters. Uh, so in this slide here, we can see um, on, on the, in the top left-hand corner, uh, we can see the hydrophobic accessible surface of these different ligands, and you can see that some of these are relatively uh, hydrophobic, and, and you can see that other ones are relatively hydrophilic. Um, on, on the next slide, and in the top right, we, we are looking at uh, the, the hydrophilic nature of ligands here, and again, we, we see this uh, spread of hydrophobic and hydrophilic um, uh, surfaces. If we look on the bottom row here, we can look for hydrogen bonding donors and hydrogen bonding acceptors. So just by looking at the, 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 sh the, the colors here of these different blocks, uh, we can see uh, quite easily that there's a diverse spread of uh, different um, chemical characteristics of, of these ligands. Um, in the next slide, uh, also looking at these um, uh, computational chemistry derived uh, properties, um, looking at, uh, in this case, we can look at aromaticity of ligands by looking at the uh, car pi carbon surfaces. Uh, we can look at log P, which is a measure of polarity. We can look at the number of rotatable bonds in the ligand structures, which is a measure of flexibility. Uh, and we can also look at their predicted binding to different protein structures, uh, in this case, uh, human serum albumin. And you might notice here that if we compare the patterns for polarity, flexibility, and binding to albumin, these are all remarkably similar. Uh, and the reason for this is that albumin tends to bind long-chain fatty acids, which are relatively apolar uh, and which are all relatively flexible. So uh, you can see uh, that the, 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 those features reflected here in these, um, in, in these calculations of different... Uh, chemical properties. So the library itself is shown in this photograph here. Um, it, it's, uh, as you might expect, in, in a standard block format. But again, the, these are not, uh, it's not like an ELISA plate where we have uh, wells. Here we have micro columns. So we have um, a, a discrete, each column has a, is, a, is a discrete column within the block. Uh, and we have a, a top frit, a pack column, and a bottom frit. Uh, and each column in this block is, is 250 microliters or 0.25 milliliters in volume. In terms of running these blocks, uh, they can be operated using the uh, automated robotic systems, uh, but they, can, they will also drain freely under gravity. So it's possible to use uh, conventional handheld pipettes uh, if, if required. After equilibration, the sample solution is applied to all of the columns, and then the flow-through fractions and elution fractions are collected uh, by simply draining into deep well collection plates. 
and these plates can then be analyzed using uh, a variety of different plate-based assays uh, to measure the amount of target protein and the amount of contaminants in each fraction. So this allows rapid identification of ligands which bind the target but not contaminants uh, as we would need for capture applications um, or ligands which bind contaminants but not the target protein uh, as we would need for polishing applications. So if we now look at some examples of the use of the multimode mimetic ligand libraries. Um, first of all, we'll look at the um, purification of monoclonal antibodies. So in this example, we have a monoclonal antibody feed. It's a CHO feed. And it, each of these, uh, uh, this, this feed material was loaded onto uh, each column in the library, uh, which was previously equilibrated using 50 millimolar phosphate, therefore at pH 7.4. Uh, containing 75 millimolar sodium chloride. And after the columns were loaded, uh, and in this case they were loaded simply by pipetting by hand uh, and let, letting them flow under gravity, uh, we then um, eluted uh, the bound material with uh, 50 millimolar citrate buffer at pH 3. So we can see now if we look at the um, elution fractions. Uh, from the, uh, the the 96 different columns, and here we've just color coded these uh, so, and uh, given them a numbering system. So uh, red um, basically means we have high binding, uh, that's numbered up, uh, up to five, um, and blue means low binding, so that will be given a zero on on this scale. So simply by looking at the, the color of, of these um, of, of the different fractions here, we can see. Uh, the, uh, the concentration of our target protein that's present in, in each fraction. And if we look at uh, in more detail uh, here, we can see that we have a, a spread of ligands, some which bind the antibody you know, quite, uh, quite tightly here. That, uh, so we're recovering virtually all of the applied protein in the elution fraction, uh, the, the applied antibody in the elution fraction. And other ones are uh, binding little or no antibody um, so they will be the, uh, the, the blue-colored um, uh, fractions here. And in just one of these zones here, so if we look here um, at the one that's shaded in, in, in orange here, we can see we have ligands within a zone which are binding antibodies quite tightly and other ligands which are not binding the antibody at all. So we, you know, we have here, again, it's a reflection of the, the diversity uh, of the library here. If we now look at um, the just in that, that highlighted zone, zone two, um, you can see that we have ligands which bind um, the, the target protein. So uh, we can see here the banding um, uh, of the target protein uh, coming through in, in the elution fractions. Uh, and also we can see other, other uh, ligands here which uh, are not binding the target but instead uh, are binding uh, contaminating proteins, uh, HCP, and also in some cases we're seeing the binding of product-related impurities. So this is light chain and a, uh, an impurity, a degradation product of the, uh, of the heavy chain. So again, the ligands in this library are very diverse and each one of them is binding a different uh, array of different proteins. So if we look, look now at the next slide, uh, we can see the interaction of the host cell protein in, in this uh, uh, monoclonal antibody feed with the ligands in the library. Uh, and again here, we, we've color-coded these. Uh, so blue, uh, blue coloring means a low binding of HCP, uh, and red coloring means high binding of HCP. And you can see that uh, some of these ligands, particularly the, the ones in rows C and D, uh, are very good binders of, of host cell protein. So if we then compare these ligands to the ones that, which bind the whole antibody, uh, we can see that there's some, some differences here. And, and we've color-coded uh, some ligands here. So the ones in yellow, uh, you might notice, uh, do not bind the whole antibody, but they do bind uh, the host cell protein very effectively. Uh, and um, uh, they don't bind the, um, the host cell protein-based impurities. So th these ligands here, color-coded in yellow, uh, are particularly good at, at removing the um, host cell-based uh, uh, impurities, uh, but they don't seem to be 
uh, have any binding of the antibody or fragments of the antibody. Um, if we then look at the ones which are color coded in orange, uh, we can see that these ones uh, also don't bind the whole antibody, uh, but they do bind the, um, the antibody fragments. Uh, and in some cases, the, the orange ligands also bind um, uh, reasonable amounts of host cell protein as well. Um, so on the next slide, uh, just looking at the, the six that we've selected here, um, so lanes three, four, and five here are the yellow, uh, the ones that were highlighted in yellow on the previous slide, and the lanes six, seven, and eight are the ones that were highlighted in orange on the previous slide. And you can see here that, that these ligands, certainly the ones in, in three, four, and five, are very effective in capturing host cell protein, um, and that's what we can see here in, in the elution fractions. And in lane six, seven, and eight, uh, these are the ligands that were effective in binding the antibody-related impurities, uh, and we can see those, um, uh, those impurities uh, here showing up um, at the bottom of the electrophoresis uh, 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 runs. So again, no, the library is very simple to use and, and very effective in identifying ligands either for the capture of the target protein or for removing specific uh, impurities. So if we move now to the next slide, um, uh, here now we, we're looking at a more complex feedstock, which is human plasma. Uh, so human plasma contains many thousands of, of different proteins, uh, and a number of these proteins are of interest as therapeutic products uh, for use in protein replacement therapies, usually. So to examine the um, selectivity of the ligands towards human plasma, um, a library block was uh, equilibrated at uh, pH 7.5, and we applied one mil of um, human plasma uh, to each column. And then we washed uh, each column with the equilibration buffer, um, and uh, we then eluted any bound proteins uh, with uh, an elution buffer, which was a mixture of one molar sodium chloride and 10% hexane diol. Um, and we use this uh, as an elution buffer because it's able to neutralize both ionic and hydrophobic binding interactions. So it's a, a very effective, what you might call, universal elution buffer for these uh, multimode ligands. So if we look at the, um, the SDS page results now of um, screening human plasma on, on the library block, uh, we can see here uh, in the lanes shown a very wide distribution of, of different proteins bound to different ligands in the block. Uh, and if you look closely, you can see there really is quite a diversity of, of, of different proteins bound here. Um, so this is a very good way of fractionating the proteins in, in human plasma. Um, the, these uh, multimode ligand blocks also have applications in the human proteome analysis because of the way that they, they fractionate different proteins from the human proteome. Um, but it's, uh, again, it's another example of the diversity of, of the ligands here and the usefulness for stripping out uh, different proteins from an applied protein mixture. Um, if we look at certain specific proteins from plasma, such as fibrinogen, um, whole IgG, or, or albumin, we can see that the ligands that bind these uh, proteins, uh, here we've highlighted them in, in red, uh, showing the, the ones which are effectively binding the, these different proteins. You can see, again, there's a number of, of, of different ligands that bind the target proteins, and there's a very different pattern of ligands here that bind fibrinogen, IgG, and albumin. Um, so, again, we can select ligands here which are effective for binding these major uh, plasma components. But we can also look at the ones color-coded in blue, uh, which are ones that don't bind these, these major proteins, but uh, potentially do bind uh, other proteins in, in, the, uh, in the applied plasma. So if we're now looking at uh, impurities uh, in, in plasma proteins, uh, there's many different um, proteins here that, that might be present. So these are natural human plasma proteins, uh, but uh, they may not be uh, wanted or desired to be present in the, uh, in, in the purified target protein. 
Uh, so typically, uh, things like clotting factors can be an issue uh, for plasma proteins, particularly things like factor 11, and uh, the presence of these in uh, uh, therapeutic products uh, can be quite a problem uh, and has resulted in uh, product recalls in, in the past. So consequently, using the, the, these libraries, uh, we, we looked into using the multimode mimetic ligand libraries to remove problem impurities from uh, plasma proteins. So if we look now at the next slide, uh, we can see here the results of screening the library for ligands which bind and remove IgA uh, from uh, IVIG. So IgA is, is, uh, is, is present in human plasma. It's a protein that is um, not considered desirable in, in IVIG, uh, and generally speaking, uh, companies take steps to remove IgA for, for therapeutic preparations of IVIG. So you can see here very simply, uh, if we just look at the, um, uh, the, the, the cells that we've highlighted in, in yellow here, uh, these are all ligands that bind IgA very effectively, uh, but they have little or no binding of, of IVIG. So this is exactly what we would want uh, uh, for uh, polishing steps that, to remove IgA, IgA from, from IVIG. And we saw the ones that we've highlighted in yellow here, these gave more than 95% removal of IgA uh, and, and had little or no binding of, of, of IgG. Uh, if we go to the next example, um, we can see here uh, we're now screening for ligands which bind and remove calicrane uh, from human plasma. And um, we found one ligand, which was in uh, position G1, which bound 87% uh, of the calicrane present, uh, but bound uh, little or no IgG uh, in, uh, the present in the plasma. So again, this, this ligand that we've identified here uh, would be very useful for removing calicrane from plasma or from IVIG preparations. In another example now, where we're looking at the capture and removal of factor 11 from plasma, and factor 11 has been a problem uh, in the past as a contaminant of IVIG preparations, uh, and it, it's certainly of concern. So having the ability to remove factor 11 from um, plasma proteins is, is certainly a big advantage. And we found here by screening the multimode mimetic ligand library, uh, three ligands which are effective for the, um, uh, the capture and removal of factor 11. Um, and uh, these all bound in excess of 85% of the factor 11 that was present. Uh, and had little or no binding of, of, of IgG. Um, on the, the next slide, just to demonstrate that um, by screening these, these library blocks, uh, they do really translate into a usable uh, chromatography um, uh, 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 separation. Um, we then took the ligand from position G1 here, so this is one of the ones that we identified as a good binder of factor 11, and we packed a small column of this. Now this, this is a 2.5 mil, mil column. We loaded on 20 mils of, of plasma, um, and we can see here from the elution profile uh, that we have a very large flow through of, um, of non-bound proteins. So these are all the main plasma proteins, including IVIG, passing through the column here. But the factor 11 is, is being captured, and we only recover that later on when we come to elute off the, the bound protein here. Uh, and if we look now at the, uh, we examined the protein composition of those fractions eluted off the column uh, by SDS page. Um, and what we found was that, again, the uh, in the flow-through fractions, uh, we, we saw very little binding of the other proteins, uh, but we did see in the elution fraction, uh, uh, we saw um, um, the uh, presence of a number of minor plasma proteins, uh, including um, amongst these the, uh, the, the, the factor 11. So again, uh, it's very easy to use these, uh, these um, multimode libraries. Uh, and they're very effective for identifying ligands that can be used for 
the uh, purification of, of a whole variety of different proteins. So to conclude the, the, the presentation, um, we've shown here that the multimobomatic ligand libraries are a very useful tool for rapidly identifying ligands to, captify, to capture target proteins and also remove specific protein impurities. Uh, this can be achieved without any significant adjustment to the starting feedstock. The diversity of the ligands ensures individual ligands combined proteins under a wide range of buffer conditions. And once identified, we can provide larger quantities of each of these for further development work and scale-up studies. Uh, and Prometic has the infrastructure in place to produce uh, large volumes of these ligands if required to, to GMP standards. So I'd like to thank you for your attention, uh, and I would also finally on the last slide here uh, like to thank uh, some of my, um, my colleagues who have uh, contributed to this work, uh, in particular Chloe Booth, Graham Clifton, Buzz Lobazoo, and Lucy Pepperell. And uh, if anybody would like further information on, on these ligands or other products that, that Prometic produces, then please visit our website, which is www prometicbiseparations.com or if you have any questions then, then please drop us an email to sales-pbl at prometic.com Thank you very much for your attention today. So that's the end of the presentation. Okay, sounds good to me. Stand by enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm still